one. Welcome back, guys, to Jared the Journeyman. Today, we're going to go over some key tips on how to pass your journeyman's test and how to study for that. So if you guys are liking what my videos are, please give me a like or subscribe. That'll help me out and get us through the algorithms or whatever it is that YouTube does. So before we get into this, I am an instructor, an electrical instructor, or a fourth year instructor at the IEC and also a training director. So I'm not just, I know a little bit more about teaching than your normal guy, your normal journeyman or superintendent, not saying that they don't know anything, but I also have the teaching side of this uh, trade behind me. So with that, let's get on with this list that I've got composed here and try to help you guys out on passing your test. First off, you guys, you got to know this, this book right here. Let me see if I can get it out. You got to know this book, the code book. Familiarize yourself with that. Familiarize yourself with the, with the tabs that we have on here. Please utilize the tabs. If you can, you can make yourself some self tabs like that, but know the layout of it. No definitions are in 100. Grounding's in 250. Um, know your appendixes. Know how to use your, your um, keyword index. That's very crucial, learning that keyword index. So practice with that. Live that. Live inside this book. If your book looks brand new, when you go to take your test, then that will tell me right away that you're not even ready for your test. Your your code book should look pretty beat up. Um, let me get some stuff. Your code book, if your state allows it, which most of them do, highlight throughout your book. I like key items in there. So live in that code book. Know that code book. Know your articles. Know what's going on in that book and where to find the answer. So know your code book. Another step is to practice problem solving. Know wiring diagram, understand load calculations and use practice tests. So if I can, I will put a link up here somewhere to some practice tests that I have online for free that you guys can use. Utilize those, take those tests, utilize your code book and learn how to use that code book off of those practice tests. And that will help you out on that. But you need to practice on, the, on that. Understand your load calculations. Don't go into that test and not ever do a load calculation. Know that on a single family dwelling, it's 3 BA per square foot. Then you still have to add another two small appliance circuits that are at 15 BA per appliance circuit plus another 1500 VA for a laundry circuit. You got to add all that up. And then at the first 3000, you take 100% of it and then 35% of the remaining. So kind of know that stuff. If you guys need help with that, hit me up. I'll, I'll get you through it. But you need to know that. Don't be surprised when you go in and take your test and it's the first time you see it. Um, Review Know your Ohm's Law. I've got some videos on that. There's some videos called uh, How to Use Pi to Solve Ohm's Law. I'll show you how to do that in a video if you don't understand that. But know Ohm's Law. Voltage drop. Know how to, how to calculate voltage drop. Remember, voltage drop is only mentioned twice in the code. And it's in an informational note. And if you know your code book... You know, informational notes are not enforced by the authority having jurisdiction. Nobody can enforce it. It's just a suggestion. But know your voltage drop. Know how to figure out series and parallel resistance in a, in a circuit. You're going to need to know that. Know what product over sum means. If you, can understand, if you know what product over sum is, then you've got to pretty much whip. But know that. Another technique use some type of memorizing um trick that we have um mine you know kind of like boy 
on your high voltage, brown, orange, yellow. That's that's what I mean. So if you got some trick to use, use it to memorize what you're what you need to know in this book. Um, another one is to visually look at something and try to to try to learn what they're what they're doing. And a good example is your transformers. On some of these hands-on tests, they're gonna have you tap different transformers to the type of voltage that they want. Usually it's a delta to a Y. So you can literally go out and look at the three pot setup on the pole and you can see a delta and a Y situation. Sometimes it's a delta delta situation, but be able to recognize that and look at your taps and see how they're configuring those taps to get that type of voltage. So use that visual as a learning aid for that. Another one is <clears throat> join a study group. You got some guys that are maybe taking this test with you. Get all together and, and pick their brains and let them pick your brains. Sometimes the best teaching tool or the best learning tool is teaching other people how to do something. Maybe you do know how to run product over some, but nobody else does. Well, you take your time and you teach those guys how to use that. And it's actually teaching you or helping you learn even more. So get in a study group. Don't be shy about, hey, I don't know this. No, we don't know. We don't know it. So get set your ego aside. Nobody knows anything, but let it be known because we may be good electricians, but we're not good mind readers, so we don't know what. And so when you get in those study groups, utilize that. Um, another one is to use online tools. If you look through all my shorts, I have probably 300 to 400 shorts of nothing but code references, code of the day kind of thing. Take those shorts, write them on a flashcard, and then you can take those flashcards and at lunch, on the way to the job site, whenever you have a, a spare time, look through the, flip through those flashcards and study that. So use anything you got online to your advantage. Um, another one is to understand your, your uh, exam questions. I believe most everyone's taken a PSI exam. Get onto PSI's website, for example, and they give you some test question examples. Of course, they're not electrical. They're just show you the format of the question. And most of them are multiple choice. I'm telling you right now, you can you should be able to look at the four answers that they want you to choose from and eliminate two right away. There's two of two oddballs in there all the time. Just scratch those out. So you just went from a 25% chance of getting the question right to a 50% chance just by that. Then go in there and understand what they're asking. So remember, they're in the they're in the business to give you tests. They're not in the business to pass you. So they're a testing agent, not a passing agent. So keep that in mind because there's some tricky stuff in there that they want to see if you're paying attention. Let's put it that way. Another one is repetition. Get in there and we'll use the flashcards, for example. Pull you five flashcards out and pretty much memorize those five flashcards where you can just know right away, boom, 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 the answer. Now, add five more flashcards to your other five, and now you have 10. Now go through those 10, memorize those until you got them down. Then add another five, and then keep adding from there. Don't try to, don't try to eat the elephant, you know, all in one bite. That's how you eat the elephant, one bite at a time. Not one big bite, one little bite at a time, and you get it conquered. So take your time. And the last one we've got is to 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 uh, simulate the real world um, real world test. I know PSI. You can buy uh, one test or a package of three to practice, and those are electrical test questions. Practice. It's not just knowing the knowledge of the electrical exam it's knowing how to take that exam knowing the format of the exam it's kind of like going up to going into a job site and 
knowing, hey, I've got to go change lights. I can go change lights, but it's in a, say it's in a hospital and you don't know where to go. Well, you're not doing anything, but just getting lost. That's the same thing with that exam. If you don't know your way around that exam, you can't get to the question or the right answer. So familiarize yourself with that. Guys, that's that's 10 uh, key components on passing your journeyman's test. Take those, use those, and you will be successful with that. Don't, and I tell everybody, don't cheat the time. You cannot cheat the time. What that means is it's going to take a while to run this marathon that you're, you're starting to train for. So <clears throat> you can't cheat it. If you do happen to get in there and pass your test, you know, make all the right guesses and then not the right answers because you're just guessing. Well, now you're a journeyman with no knowledge and the time will come back and bite you in the butt because you'll be turned off to run a job and you won't have any knowledge in it. So don't cheat the time. Learn this stuff. It's learnable. I'm living proof that you can learn this high school graduate that's it so take your time and learn the stuff go through the steps if you guys have any questions let me know leave me a comment below and i will try to guide you through whatever you need and go from there but that's all i've got today guys as always be safe out there and we'll talk soon